Good morning, dear friends. It is so nice to be with you on this day to spend a few minutes in the presence of God, silently listening to the voice of God and His Word, and which may give us or directions for our lives today, that uh, we may live a life that is well pleasing to God and bringing forth fruit. Today's meditation is taken from the uh, letter of Paul to Philippian Church, chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. And let me read this, uh, these two verses for you. Apostle Paul says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent, or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. And may the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher, guide us into the truth of God's word and help us to walk in the light of God's word. Mind is always thinking something. It is set on thoughts. And Apostle Paul wants our minds to be set on the right things. And uh, that is very, very important. If we allow our minds to be diverted and set on wrong things in this world, then we will walk in the wrong way. And so be careful what we allow our minds to occupy with. And the Bible, especially the New Testament, has a lot to say concerning our minds. And our need to set our minds on right things. And yeah, that is important. The psalmist says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in counsel of the ungodly, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of the, of, the, of the sinners, of the wicked. But his delight is in the Lord, and in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. That is what the Bible says. And that is how we can set our minds on godly and the right things of life. And uh, the true Christian character is not in the absence of evil, but in the possession and the practice of the good. And what is better than the law of the Lord? So the apostle says, dwell on these things. What is Christian life? It is not belief in certain truths, but it is building up Christian character. And our character must be characterized by the holiness of God. Christian character cannot be built up by worldly things or worldly learning. It requires Christian spirit and God's uh, laws. What is character, by the way? Character is what you are when nobody is watching you. And uh, what you do, and what you read, and where you go, and with whom you spend your time, these are all important in forming your character. To achieve such a character, what influences us most is our mind. Is the, what is mind? Mind is the seat of uh, thoughts and decision. It is like a conference room of a company or a firm where a, a review is taken of their performance of the past one year and 
the setback and the losses and the profit and the mistakes we made, uh, then this will help this firm or company in their planning uh, for the new year. Avoid the past mistakes. Learning what to do and how to do. Uh, the new strategies to be adopted in order to be more successful this new year. Thoughts have a transforming power. Satan had no problem in subduing Eve. Easily and successfully made her do what he wanted her to do. How did he accomplish this? He knew where to attack. He attacked her mind. And sight and hearing are the gateway to your mind. And by his smooth talk, he attracted her attention to the fruit. And uh, then he drew her attention to the fruit. And she said, how beautiful it is to look at. And uh, how beautiful it is for outward appearance. She began to think how good the fruit will be in the mouth. Even to look at the fruit is so attractive and beautiful. And certainly this will also taste good in my mouth. So it is good to eat. And she ate the fruit and gave some to her husband. You see, where the devil attacked her mind. And very sweetly he was talking. And she was listening. And everything was taken in her mind. And she began to think, yeah, there is some truth in what this serpent is saying. Uh, otherwise, why should God, the Creator, the Father in heaven, should tell us not to eat from this? He doesn't want us to know, recognize the good from the bad. Uh, he, she began to think and argue and reason out within her own mind. And she came to the conclusion that what the devil, what the serpent was saying is correct. And so I am not going to live by that. So he, 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 he plucked a tree, uh, the fruit, and she ate. You see, my friends, this is the strategy of the devil. Even today, where does all the fight originate? Where does all the greed originate? Where does all the murder take place? It is in the mind of the, uh, the murderers or thief or, or people who are arrogant and who always wants to fight. The fight and all these things originate in your mind first. That's where the devil attacks them. And it is therefore very important. And... Uh, uh, this is Satan's strategy. He sets up his strongholds in believers' mind. And that is, that is their thought. The thought line of your mind is to be guarded and protected from evil attack. And many people do not realize it. And the devil is very subtle in his ways. And to escape Satan's deception, listen to the New Testament instructions concerning how to protect your mind. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 says, Therefore, brothers, present your bodies as a living sacrifice to the Lord, holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable worship. Do not be conformed to this world, 
but be conformed to the image of God. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen to that. So that you may know that which is good, pleasing and perfect will of God. And my brothers and sisters, this is the way you protect your mind from the devil's attack. Here is your shield. Present your body as a living sacrifice and then be transformed in your mind. Be changed from worldliness into godliness. From carnal thinking to spiritual thinking. Do you want to know what God's will is for you and God's will for everybody? Then this is what you have to do. And when you do what this verse says, you will succeed in protecting your mind and keep the devil away. And Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ, Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated. At the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above and not on earthly things. That is how you protect your mind. And always remember, let not the devil use your mind as his workshop. But on the other hand, if you obey these verses that we are both in Philippians and Colossians, set your mind on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God the Father for you. And he is interceding for you that you may have the strength and the wisdom and the ability to distinguish what is evil and what is good and godly. And thus you live a godly life pleasing to God. Then you will know what is God's will for you and for others and for the church of Jesus Christ. Here is your message for today. Meditate on this as you live. Take your steps according to God's word and uh, arrange and set your mind on the things of God that by the end of this day you may have the satisfaction of living a godly and holy life successfully glorifying God and being a testimony to others. God bless you as you endeavor to live and walk with the Lord. Amen. God bless you.